Hey YouTube, the wife and I just purchased this 2012 Camp N560 Ultra Teardrop Trailer. We've been wanting to get out and do some camping and tent camping just wasn't cutting it. Uh, so we started looking around and came across this uh, beautiful design and fell in love. And so I'd like to give you a little uh, video walk around and show you the inside, outside, galley. A quick shout out to Doggo Running who has some great videos of his 2006 uh, 560 Camp In Ultra. If you haven't seen those yet, check them out. They're, they're really good. Um, and I'll show you the differences between uh, his 2006 and uh, our 2012. So let's start with a walk around the outside. Uh, you'll see this is a little bit different than a traditional teardrop uh, because you have this sort of extended area along the front right here where a traditional teardrop has more of a sweeping design. And that extended area right there actually has a couch uh, inside, um, in addition to the queen size bed. And that couch can actually be turned into bunk beds. So it's uh, very, very uh, versatile in that respect. Then you've got these large uh, doors for getting in and out, uh, one on each side. Your traditional baby moon wheels. And then uh, down here in the lower left corner, um, you have this uh, hookup for solar power. Um, so if you pick up some solar panels, um, you can plug them into there and keep your batteries uh, charged uh, while you're dry camping. Then swinging around to the back side here, we've got this uh, large galley area. I'll show you more of that in just a minute. And then up here you'll see a vent. Um, that's because we actually have an air conditioner on the inside of uh, the camper. Um, the camper also comes with uh, LED tail lights. And then the steel bumper right here, um, which is an uh, optional upgrade you can have installed when the trailer is being built. Then coming around to the other side, um, you'll see that uh, we actually have an antenna right here. Um, that's a power antenna, and uh, that's because we have a stereo, AM, FM stereo, CD player, and all that kind of stuff inside um, for when we're camping. And that was actually a custom part of the install that the original purchasers had installed when they ordered it. That's one of the really nice things about camping is because they actually custom build these to meet your needs. Um, they have two basic designs for this 560. They have got a classic and an ultra. This is the ultra version, which has some upgrades. Um, but since camping's building this, they can actually build it custom to your specific needs. And they can do various installs for things that are not part of their regular upgrade option. Um, and then right there is your uh, hookups for water, gas, and things like that. I'll show you a still image of that with a closer close-up pic of that. Um, coming around then towards the front of the trailer, you'll see that uh, we've got this um, black, what they call Alcan cover, um, which is basically your you know automotive bra. It's a padded sort of bra that helps protect the front end from any sort of uh, rocks and dings and things that are flying up from the uh, flying up from the road. So here's the front storage compartment. Um, there's a shelf that kind of runs right about here, um, and uh, the top part is accessible from the inside. And then here's the outside that's got a uh, locks on it. Um, and then here you can keep various uh, tools and things that you might need access to. Um, you know, I've got this bag full of stakes and a hammer and a hatchet and, and things in there that I might need. Um, in that bag, and then I've got a you know, pipe that uh, feeds off a, a tank, a propane tank, so that I can hook up lanterns and uh, external stoves and things like that. I've got the dog uh, collar uh, uh, stake in there and stuff to keep her from running off when uh, um, we're hanging around the campground. So it's, it's very stuff like that. So here's the propane tank. This is an 11 gallon tank. Um, lasts you quite a while depending on how much you use the stove. Um, then you've got a seven prong uh, electrical hookup um, right here. And uh, you know that runs your lights, your uh, trailer brakes and things like that if your trailer has brakes on it, which is uh, very helpful if you're towing with a smaller, lighter weight vehicle and uh, need help stopping the trailer. Um, then you've also got uh, the trailer breakaway, emergency breakaway uh, latch right here so that if the trailer comes loose from the hitch, it'll help stop the trailer. Um, then you've got also dual safety chains right here. 
um, that uh, also help uh, keep the trailer attached, powder coated frame, and that's pretty much everything on the front. Okay, so here's the galley and how everything is stored inside. Let's get a closer look and you can see uh, we've got a stainless steel kitchen table here. We've got a side table here for storing the cooler on it. Underneath that is where you would normally store your cooler. In our case, we've got an electric uh, refrigerator that runs off of uh, DC power. Um, it's also capable of uh, running off of AC power as well if you've got that available. It's about a 33, 35 quart cooler. Um, so it doesn't hold a ton of stuff, but if you plan your food, uh, plan your meals accordingly, um, you can actually get probably a good week's worth of uh, food in there. Um, then over here to the side, we've got a sink um, along with a sprayer, faucet that you know uh, moves around to different directions. Up top, we've got uh, storage, and then a utility silverware drawer um, for all that kind of stuff. Um, then uh, coming over to the other side, uh, again, we've got more storage up top as well as this cabinet right here. Um, plenty of room inside that cabinet, and you can see the uh, solar charge controller mounted on the right side of that wall. Um, again, that's something that Camp In installs as an optional upgrade. Um, then you see we've got speakers in the galley um, from the inside stereo, so we can get new music there. Uh, we've got this hatch bar uh, that holds the hatch open. In speaking with the camp in folks, uh, they chose not to go with the gas uh, field hatch bars because they would just wear out too easily. Um, so instead, they kind of created this bar here, and it uh, works works wonderfully. Um, then uh, moving over here to the uh, other side, um, we've got the uh, paper towel holder. This is something that the people who uh, ordered the uh, trailer uh, put in installed themselves. You've got a dual uh, two-way light um, uh, that's dimmable. Um, you've also got these uh, optional uh, windscreens that uh, kind of drop down and then plug into these or snap into these snaps right here to help block the uh, uh, wind if you're in uh, kind of a windy area and can't keep the stove lit or something. Um, so it works uh, works pretty well. Um, you know, everything is just kind of laid out really nice. Um, over here, you can see you've got your DC power, your AC power. Again, that only works when you're connected to uh, the campground electricity. And then you've got a tank level monitor that shows you your how much uh, wastewater you've got in the gray water tank, um, how much water is in your freshwater tank, and your battery. Um, this does have an 8-gallon freshwater and an 8-gallon gray water uh, tank uh, on board. out um, so you can see you've got uh, a nice little kitchen table here um, you know where you can either do food prep or you know sit down and eat out if you really want to um, then the cooler stand got up over here uh, with the refrigerator uh, set up then uh, you see we've got a nice two burner and this is a beefy beefy stove uh, burnt cooktop um, with heavy-duty cast iron grates and this thing throws out a ton of heat and when you're when you don't need it it just slides away um, and so you've got uh, plenty of storage in the galley area you've got two big storage compartments here um, let's see get this out of the way so you know you've got deep 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 storage here that goes quite a ways back underneath the sink and then you know, these little baskets move out of the way this is again these baskets were something that the uh, owners kind of put in uh, themselves um, let's just kind of drop in then over on this side you've got more storage again goes way way down there so you can see that you know it's a good three quarters of my arm to halfway up my arm um, you got a nice little spot for skillets and pots and pans you got access to the battery here and then the fuse panel um, one thing to note uh, from 
up until about 2009 they were using a small uh, motorcycle style battery and then 2010 I think is when they switched to the automotive style battery so um, this compartment shrunk down a little bit um, from the older, older models to make room for the bigger battery that sits underneath here. Um, so that is one of the differences between the older and newer, newer models. Um, so there you go, that's the uh, gallery. Very, very fine attention to detail on the build of this thing. It's just, it really is just an impressive fit, finish, um, well-architected design um, over the entire thing. Um, just, just amazing, amazing attention to detail. This thing is just a beautiful piece of work. Um, so there's the galley for you. And like I said, I'll include some steel images. So one other thing I wanted to show you um, is where the storage area is for the cooler. We've got this uh, refrigerator model, which has vents uh, on the back and on the front uh, that need to be kept clear so that the fridge can operate uh, efficiently. And so um, what uh, we've got then is, uh, I don't know if this is Campin that did this or not, but... Uh, there's this, you know, towel that's got this essentially wood block uh, sewn into it um, that uh, keeps you from being able to push it all the way up against the back wall. And it just kind of slides right in and allows those vents to remain clear so that the uh, fridge can operate efficiently. So let's take a look at inside. Um, the Ultras have these nice vintage style, uh, stylish handles, um, which the Classics have more of a straight handle. Um, the inside's a little messy because uh, we did sleep in it last night. We just bought it over the weekend, and so we wanted to give it a try. And extremely comfortable um, and very, very roomy and kept us nice and warm. Um, plenty of room, you know, with this couch area and, and things like that. Um, you know, you've got your storage cabinets and your TV, DVD player and the air conditioning um, all right there in the center. Um, the original owners uh, that ordered this, also and put in a two inch memory foam mattress on top of the regular mattress. And so it's just extremely comfortable uh, to sleep in. Um, we stayed plenty warm um, throughout the night and uh, it was, it was awesome. So climbing inside, um, basically you got four storage cabinets, uh, two upper, two lower um, with the air conditioning along the top and then the TV DVD player in the center on the bottom. And uh, that actually opens up as well for additional storage for movies or whatever it is you might want to put back there. Um, and uh, um, so, there, you know, it's really slick. And that's also one of the things that's different between the earlier models and uh, the, I think, 2010 or so and above. Is they switched over to these uh, flat panel displays um, and TVs. So that uh, gives you a little bit more room for, for storage behind it. So that's pretty cool. Um, down in the lower left, you've got your AC and DC uh, power outlets. Again, the AC does not work unless you have um, shore power connected to it at the campsite um, or a generator or something like that. Um, but the TV does, right? There's a switch right there um, that uh, powers the uh, TV as well as the stereo. Um, so I'll show you that. Sorry for all the shaking there um, as I maneuver around the cabinet cabin there. Um, but, uh, you know, the DC allows your, you know, I'm not connected up to any power right now. And you can see I've got full power to the stereo as well as the, the TV. Um, the switch to the right of the stereo um, is for the power antenna. Um, so you just hit that and it uh, powers antenna up, and then you can pick up local stations and things like that. Um, so uh, stepping back, let's go look at the um, cabinet up on the upper left so you can see how much uh, room is in there. Um, very, very uh, roomy storage with amazing attention to detail. Paneling throughout, they got trim throughout. Um, they really did pay really close attention to detail on this thing. It's, it is truly a work of art. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed by the, the amount of effort these guys put into it. Um, underneath the TV, you saw the uh, speakers. Um, this is the fantastic fan. Um, 
The Ultras come with the Fantastic Fan, and uh, this is the upgraded version of the Fantastic Fan with a rain sensor. Um, so this fan is, uh, is actually pretty cool. Um, you just hit a button, and it'll automatically open up the vent. Um, and uh, you can also manually control that, by the way, um, if you don't want to use the power vent. Um, but it'll automatically open a vent. You can see in just a second the fan kicks on, um, and it's set on low uh, right now. So there's a low, medium, and high setting. Um, and it moves a lot of air, even on the, on the low setting. So uh, there's your uh, speed setting for the fan. The one on the left side is the uh, temperature sensor. So you can have it kick on and, autom on and off automatically based on the temperature. Then up in the upper right corner is the intake and exhaust. So you can either exhaust warm air out of the cabin or bring cool air into the cabin. Um, you know, and you just set the temperature sensor for whatever it is you're, you want, to, whatever's comfortable for you. And the fan will just automatically turn on and off. And it's relatively quiet. Um, so it doesn't sound like a, a jet engine taking off or anything like that. It's not obnoxious like that. Um, and, uh, you know, so it won't keep you awake at night or anything. And it moves a, a good amount of air. Now, as I said, this is the rain sensing version. So what's really cool about that is um, there's a moisture sensor that if it starts to rain, it'll automatically close the cover and shut off the fan um, so that you don't come back. If you're out on a hike, for example, you don't come back to, you know, wet and soggy blankets or mattress or anything like that. Or if it's in the middle of the night, it'll automatically start closing. Um, Again, the attention to detail of this thing is just thoroughly impressive. Got these beautiful panoramic windows out front. Um, uh, it's just just amazing. And then you got this this lovely you know sort of couch area right here. Um, this is where our dog gets to sleep um, because our doggy goes camping with us because we don't have any kids. But this also turns into bunk beds, and so that top that back portion um, sits up top there. Um, and then the cushion becomes the mattress for the top bunk and then the bottom bunk lays flat um, and the bottom cushion is the for the for the bottom bunk and so it's great for kids and, and, and things like that it's not good for adults it's it's uh, uh, way too small for adults but you know somebody under five foot um, would be perfect for those those sort of bunk beds um, then uh, you've also got storage uh, behind the bunk beds or behind the couch um, that are accessible um, from the inside. Um, and so uh, there's these, you know, beautiful, again, beautiful woodwork on the cabinets and, and things like that. Um, but it's a really big storage area inside. So you just uh, you know, flip that down and then you've got access to this large storage area. It goes all the way across. Um, and makes it extremely accessible. Well, I don't want to say extremely accessible, but accessible uh, from the inside. Um, you've also got a porch light on each side um, that basically uses one of the uh, side marker lights. Um, the amber one um, turns it into a porch light so that you can have uh, at least a bit of a, a little bit of illumination outside. Um, the same sort of lighting uh, thing on the inside. So these are dimmable two-way lights with both white and red, and they really do light up the cabin well um, in the evenings. And so you have three of those on the inside. Uh, you've got cup holders on the inside. Um, you've got, uh, you know, uh, just amazing, amazing, amazing design. I love this trailer. Um, it's really awesome. Um, again, uh, for the stereo, you've got that switch right there on the right for the power antenna. And that was a custom install done uh, on behalf of the original order. And up on the top area is where they put the power antenna. Um, so you just flip that switch and it just automatically pops the antenna up. Um, and again, that's kind of one of the cool things about camping is that they do, you know, build these things custom to your specific needs, um, you know, as you're, as you're ordering it. So it's, it's really, really slick um, the way they do that. And the customer service of camping I can't tell you how good these folks really are. They really do take care of their customers. They're not just there uh, to try and sell you a trailer. Obviously, they would love to sell you a trailer. Um, but, uh, for example, when I was getting ready to buy my trailer, I was getting ready. I mean, it was literally the day I was going to place my order um, to camp in. This unit uh, that, I'm, that we bought ended up being put up for sale. Um, and so as I was talking to camp in about my ordering my trailer, 
know, I told him about this one and you know, Carrie over there said, you know, he, he knew the owners well. They, it seems like they know all of their owners uh, well, but he knew the owners. He said they, you know, he saw it after, you know, several big trips. He said they've taken excellent care of it. He goes, I agree. It's probably too good of a deal to pass up um, and was basically encouraging me to, to go buy this one um, instead of trying to just sell me another trailer. Um, and, you know, I had tons of questions about this trailer and everything, and he answered them all. Um, just very, very supportive staff over there. So these guys are a really, really good bunch of folks. Um, I, I can't praise them enough um, for how supportive they are of not only their new customers, but their existing customers and even their secondhand customers. Um, you know, these trailers are, are built to last um, and uh, they want everybody to have a good experience with the trailers. So um, really, really good folks. Um, highly encourage you if you're looking for a camp trailer, this is, this is one of the ones to really consider. Uh, one other thing I forgot to talk about was the screen doors. Um, so I've got these uh, screens uh, rolled up and uh, they just zip uh, all the way around. So if you're in a spot where you want to get a good cross breeze going through uh, and leave the doors wide open, um, you just zip these screen doors up and uh, you, get this, you get a great breeze blowing through. So um, really, really solid construction throughout. Um, well designed, a lot of attention to detail. Another option you can get uh, with this trailer is a side entrance tent. Um, and essentially the way it uh, hooks up is um, it covers this uh, door area and it hooks across the top and then it just kind of comes up and then out and then down. And it gives you a really nice uh, place to step out where you're not into public uh, a public eye and be able to, you know, change your clothes and, and things like that. Um, you know, and it's, it's very convenient, uh, for, for that type of, of thing. Now, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about what it is we wanted to do about a, a camping trailer and considering different options. My brother, my sister, my dad all have class A motorhomes. Um, and they're absolutely beautiful. They really are. Um, but they're also uh, big and expensive and uh, costly to operate. Um, and, you know, they're not, they're not always the most effective solution for, for all the different uh, uh, folks that are, that are out there. And so, um, you know, what I really like about this particular trailer um, versus other options is one is, is is it's very compact um it fits inside my garage quite easily so i don't have to worry about storing it off-site um and off-site storage for a big motorhome can be expensive um, it can be anywhere from fifty dollars a month to you know four or five hundred dollars a month um and so you know that's a that's an expensive ticket uh to to pay when you when you've got to store something um, where this is just fits right inside my garage. Um, it's super lightweight. Uh, so it's, it's nothing to tow. Um, it, you know, now I'm pulling it with a big V8 truck. Um, I don't even feel it back there. It doesn't really impact my gas mileage. Now, granted, a V8 truck doesn't get great gas mileage to begin with. Um, but it, you know, I'm still getting better gas mileage than a, than a big class C or class A motor. Um, it's also light enough that my wife and I can easily, you know, push this thing up and up and down the driveway. Um, we can put it into the garage uh, by ourselves. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, very easy to, to maneuver around. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, very compact. It's got everything we need, um, from a camping perspective. It certainly beats tent camp camping. Um, but then, uh, um, you know, it's not as expensive to buy or to operate as a, you know, big, big motor home. Um, in terms of, you know, a, you know, travel trailer or something like that, you know, I don't want to be hauling a big uh, brick behind me that's going to, you know, kill my gas mileage and again have to store off site. Um, so I don't have to worry about any of that. Um, I've got, uh, you know, all the conveniences I could possibly need with the exception of a bathroom and a shower. Now, if you're at any good campsite, they're going to have all of those amenities available to you. 
Um, and if you're doing dry camping, well, then I've got a privacy tent and some solar showers and, and you know, things like that that allow me to get cleaned up after a hard day of, of riding motorcycles and the like. So, um, you know, it's really a, a very, very effective solution for us. Um, I like it better than the pop-up uh, campers and things like that because, one, as I'm driving down the road, if I get tired, I can pull over, pull into a sleeping uh, in a rest area, we'll climb in and, and immediately lay down and get some rest. Whereas with a pop-up, you know, you've got you've to set them up um, just to just start using them. Um, there, this is also pretty warm inside um, where it's pop-up. you still got, you know, canvas sides and the like in, in many of those. And so it um, takes a little more work to keep them warm. Um, so, I mean, those are some of the reasons why we chose this over, uh, other solutions. Uh, plus I just love the look of this thing. Um, it's definitely, uh, uh, an interesting sort of design and, and you can't be shy on one of these things. That's for sure. Cause we brought it home and within two hours, people were walking by saying, what is that? Um, and so it's, uh, it's an attention getter. That's for sure. So. Anyway, there's a little bit about our uh, Campin 560. If you've got any questions, please post a comment or leave a question. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I can also provide a coupon if you're interested in getting one yourself um, and enjoying uh, you know, one of your own uh, uh, campers. Here's some still images for you. Um, this is kind of what it looks like with a big screen tin on the backside, um, how much space it takes up. There's a view of your panoramic windows. Uh, looking out, uh, looking out the windows, um, another view of the couch, uh, with the windows open. Um, this is what it looks like when the bunk beds are set up. Um, very easy to do. Um, here's some of your galley storage. You know, this is with the bins in there. Um, and then with the bins out, you can see it's tons and tons of space. Um, there's the right side storage bin as well. Um, and then here's the uh, front storage bin uh, empty. Um, last uh, image is your hookups. Um, so again, if you have any questions, you know, please let, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, you know, leave a comment.